When I first got the script for Underwater, I just read straight through it. It was just so like, so interesting seeing this vision and imagining what could possibly be down at the bottom of the ocean and imagining a world where people are down there, you know, uh, just blue collar workers doing uh, mineral extraction and stuff like that. So it's, it, looking at that futuristic world was, was completely enticing to me. But just the fact that we know so little and that we know more about space than we practically do know about what's in our own backyard, uh, I knew I had to get into that and make a story. There's a ton of different things hitting uh, our our cast during the movie. Um, you know, you begin with a lot of environmental uh, problems. Obviously, the station is falling apart. The intense pressure, the darkness, uh, lack of oxygen. There's so many things that could go wrong just a few miles from the surface. It's sort of funny. You're like just just you're just all you have to do is go up, but it's so hard to go up. Um, so. You know, most of the problems early on are just environmental problems. But then as things go along, some of those issues start to become questionably, are they environmental problems or is there something else out there? There's a lot of phobias in this film for sure. Uh, and I think that, I don't, for some weird reason, I'm like a weird person where I'll wake up in the middle of the night and feel like I truly understand something or I, I truly feel something. I, I don't know exactly how, to, almost like I wake up from a dream and I'll, I'll wake up and I'll feel claustrophobic for a second, even though I'm just laying in my own bed. And those unbelievable intense feelings are what uh, drive me to seek those out filmically. In, in this movie, you're in these suits at the bottom of the ocean in intense pressure, completely closed off from anything, you can't even touch your face. And to me, that claustrophobia and that fear of almost being in a coffin uh, in one of the most intense environments in the world was something, you know, we really wanted to find a way to get th that inside the audience's head. So we did a lot of tricks like shooting inside the helmets where you would just hear the breathing and the intensity and be right on uh, Nora's face, just right there with her as these crazy things are happening just inches from her face you know, at this, uh, in this incredible environment. Um, we, you know, did a lot of stuff. We were shooting on these really dark stages that just had absolutely no light. So right away, it just felt, you know, you can be in the biggest space in the world, but you're, you're in a weird way, you're just completely enclosed in blackness. So it doesn't matter how vast the ocean is. When you're down there in the dark, there's nothing. It's just you. So you might as well be in a coffin. Uh, you know, we were always trying to find ways that we could push that harder and harder. And even though, you know, the start of the movie, they're in these tiny tunnels and there's these crazy things that happen with explosions and things collapsing. As soon as they get out into the vast ocean, it doesn't get any better. It's perhaps even more confined and more intense. So, um, yeah, we were just trying to find every trick in the book to kind of get that across and, and uh, make an exciting movie. It really was a carefully crafted piece of art to sort of like take people from this real world to this fantastical dry for wet world at the bottom of the ocean using basically every type of effect you can think of. Uh, visual effects, special effects, um, you know, it was one heck of an endeavor and a huge, huge project for every, every single person involved. Underwater is a movie at the bottom of the ocean, but we're not really at the bottom of the ocean. So we're using a ton of technologies to get there. Special effects, visual effects, you name it. If there's effects, it's in it. We use a lot of crazy technologies to get there. But in a way, what was so cool was with our Drive for Wet, we were able to shoot in the dark and use volumetric sort of scanning, if you will, to achieve this look, which is a process of putting a tiny bit of atmosphere around the actors and letting their flashlights, you know, go move through these tiny, tiny bits of particles that we're actually putting in the room. And then later we measure that and we know about the density to which the water should be moving around them through their movements and the way their flashlights are moving through the scene. And what's so exciting about that is it enables the actors to actually be in the space, in the dark, only seeing what their flashlights see 
and really feeling like they're there, which is any you know storyteller will tell you that's the mo one of the most important things because you're not asking the actor to get on a big green screen and just sort of pretend they're in the dark. They really get to be in the dark, surrounded by that claustrophobia and really only see what's in their flashlight. Then we take that scene, measure these sort of like 3D elements that we have by having these little markers around, and then we simulate the water around that. And uh, the results are pretty, pretty wild, so. The creatures evolved quite a bit while we were filming. You, you sort of, because they're, you know, we have people mimic thing, them on set, but then as you get deeper and deeper into the movie, uh, in post and the digital part starts to work itself out. You just see the parts that you love about it and it's almost like, it's like directing an actor but very slowly over a long period of time. You're like, oh, that's what I love about what we're doing here, so let's do that more. Or his eyes look so creepy, let's make him a little bigger. And his hands look so messed up, let's, let's focus on that. We had to be pretty creative um, with our set designs, because sometimes one set had to be another set later. Uh, so we tried to make really bold choices in terms of like the ages of the sets. So they start um, at the Kepler, which is this much older sort of suspended pump station up in the air. Um, and that, that station is really like probably a lot more steel and, and uh, just the color palettes look kind of older and a lot more rust in it. Um, and then from there, they move later to the Roebuck station, which is a much newer station set right on the, on the bottom. And it's newer, a lot lighter paint qualities. Um, we put a lot of glass blocks in there, like uh, kind of like, they look sort of 80s in a way, but um, I just like the way the light would come through them and you immediately felt like you were somewhere else. So we took the same sets and sort of bashed out parts of them and completely redid it this way uh, or that way just to make it look like a different space. Um, and, you know, you do a lot with just basic shape design and, and lighting to get there, but Naaman did a terrific job in just flipping out entire places. And one day you'd be walking from the Roebuck station and, you know, two days later you'd go in and you're like, oh my God, this looks like we're back at the Kepler. We got so lucky on Underwater with our cast. We just, I couldn't even believe it. We got Kristen Stewart, Vincent Cassell, TJ Miller, John Gallagher Jr., Mamadou Ate, Jessica Henwick. Just an awesome, awesome crew. Well, I call them a crew, but, you know, group of people just, you know, that you maybe wouldn't totally expect to be in a movie like this. Uh, people who were really willing to get into that sandbox and push the limits of, um, you know, what they could imagine and what this could be like, you know, just somebody who was willing to participate in such an insane sort of wild idea of such a journey of a movie. Kristen Stewart, she plays Nora Price, um, just crushes it, like literally put so much into her character. I don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. It's just like, um, she's so thoughtful about not just like how the character is going to appear or what they're doing like obviously all those things but she gets into a place that is like almost mystical in terms of like uh, the just the thought process that she you see is like behind her eyes as she gets into that character um I don't know, it's, it's unbelievable to watch her work, and she's so talented, obviously. Vincent Cassell was just a powerhouse. Like, talk about a person with unbelievable gravitas and presence. Um, you know, he plays our captain, sort of our shepherd. Uh, and just even having him there on set, you sort of feel like he is a shepherd. He just has so much, um, like I said, gravitas sort of about him, just even his presence and, and the way he looks at things. With Underwater, we got to create this incredible visual world, you know, going to the bottom of the ocean. And it, we really wanted people to feel like they wanted, you know, even though it's a scary movie and there's a lot of places you might want to close your eyes, I wanted people to want to watch just because it's such an interesting place. So getting to envision that was a lot of fun. And our cinematographer, Boyan Bazelli, is a true master of his craft. 
who just literally, you know, we shot 65 millimeters, so really big. So I hope people go see this in the movie or in the theaters because it's just so cool looking.